Welcome to this podcast series on The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Are you wondering how deep tech startups move out of the lab and successfully make it to market? This series may help you to address some of your questions. I am your host, Aoife Mangan, and in this series, I interview technology experts from fascinating industries, including space, energy, health, and quantum. In each episode, we will meet a European Innovation Council, also known as the EIC Program Manager, and listen to their experience scaling up European deep tech. In case you haven't heard about it, the EIC is Europe's flagship innovation program, supporting university-based tech projects and game-changing tech companies. Today, we're tackling the topic of space debris. From large, dead satellites lost in space to small flecks of paint fallen from a rock during launch. Space debris is currently one of the biggest challenges facing the space industry. You've probably heard the saying, what goes up must come down. Well, this is not necessarily true when it comes to space debris. Right now, more than 7,500 tonnes of material accumulated over 60 years of space activity is orbiting Earth. Even without releasing any further satellites into space, this figure will be perpetrated by a domino effect of future collisions of the space debris already in space. These collisions definitely need to be avoided, considering that the impact of a 10 centimeter object, now 10 centimeters is like the size of a, of a deck of playing cards, is enough to cause the catastrophic fragmentation of a typical satellite, which is quite incredible really. Satellites in low orbit Earth are forced to perform collision avoidance maneuvers as frequently as every two or three months, I think it is, to avoid these consequences of collisions in space. Not to mention the fact that space debris can crash back to Earth. What happens if large debris lands in inhabited areas? It might be unlikely, but it is certainly not impossible and it does happen. So, here to talk to us about the emergence of the private space industry known as New Space and the mission of the EIC to identify, develop and scale up Europe's breakthrough technologies to help resolve this major issue of space debris and indeed many other issues is Program Manager for Space, Stella, who specialises in the commercialisation of space technologies. Welcome to you, Stella. Hello, thank you for inviting me for this podcast. Thank you for coming, Stella. So Stella, your expertise is, as I said, in the commercialization of space technologies, and your role is to identify emerging trends and opportunities for future support, making you certainly a key player in supporting the growth of the new space market. Can you explain to us why is it important to support space-related, or this new space as we call it, technology startups? Well, in recent years, we have been witnessing increased demand for fast-track flight qualification of satellites, increased launches of satellites, creating new opportunities, but also challenges. Actually, a lot of space SMEs and startups would need to discover, identify, and develop new markets, attract investors, and at the same time, develop their business models. SMEs very often have to design, test, and successfully fly their hardware in space and in parallel attract customers and investors. Very difficult tasks. These simultaneous ongoing activities are quite challenging and complex for these small companies. Therefore, new space SMEs and startups need to be supported the best way possible for achieving breakthrough innovation and creating markets that contribute directly to this economy. And the role of the EIC in this case is actually to support the breakthrough technology and game-changing innovations that these SMEs and startups will create through funding their disruptive high-risk ideas and supporting them in the process of innovation, demonstration and commercialization through our EIC programs. Fantastic, Stella. Thank you very much for explaining that. And considering these these space ventures span areas such as private launch companies, for example, or, or smaller satellite constellations, what do you see for the future of the European new space sector? 
I see in the future actually an increased growth of the upstream activities in the domain of in-orbit satellite servicing, active debris removal, in-space manufacturing and ice assembly. I see European Earth Observation and GNSS companies working in the downstream domain actually increasing their markets and growing them. I also see uh, the emergence of innovative propulsion technology and emergence of uh, space tugs, European ones for satellite servicing and in combination with modular satellite concepts and plug-and-play architectures. I believe disruptive space technologies for space debris removal and management will be of critical importance in the long-term future for the European new space sector. Very interesting, Stella. And so you're talking about the longer term here. Um, how do you see this industry developing in the next, let's say, five or ten years' time? Honestly, I do not like to make predictions. Uh, nevertheless, the upstream new sp uh, European space industry in 2021 has registered the growth of sales and according to certain studies has reached 8.6 billion euros. In addition, I think that in five, ten years, we will see a much more strong role of European companies for in the domain of in-orbit satellite servicing, active debris removal, end-of-life services. And of these companies tapping in the potential market of $4.4 billion, uh, which is planned to be by 2030. I also see more private venture capital and funding going into upstream uh, projects, but also... I believe that the growth of the new space SMEs and startups will actually depend not only on the macroeconomic aspect, but also will depend on their factors like their own capabilities to develop and propose customer-driven, interoperable, scalable, and cost-effective space-based solutions. I believe their capability to be resilient in this macroeconomic situation will uh, give them quite strong competitiveness. Fantastic, Stella. So it seems uh, we just need to watch this space, pardon the pun. <laughs> also with us today is uh, Gonzalo Sanchez, who is Associate Professor at Universidad Carlos III de Madrid and coordinator of the ETPAC and ETPAC F projects, which are funded by the EIC Pathfinder and Transition programs. So uh, Gonzalo works works quite closely with Stella, and uh, he will he will tell us about a new ready to fly deorbit kit, which the idea um, is that this will eliminate space debris at the end of life. I understand if I understand correctly, Gonzalo. Welcome to you. Uh, thank you, Ifa. You understood uh, correctly, and I'm looking Good. forward to the conversation. <laughs> Good, me too. It's a pleasure to have you here, Gonzalo. As you mentioned, your project has been, uh, as mentioned already, I mentioned it too. Uh, your project has been working on a groundbreaking deorbit device. So this will be mounted on launch upper stages and satellites, causing these spacecrafts to be eliminated at the end of life. And I, I, you, you might explain to us a little bit about what eliminated actually means, um, but the idea is that they're, they're eliminated instead of floating around in orbit. Can you explain a little bit more how this works exactly and what lies ahead for the project? Um, our deorbit device uh, uses an electrodynamic tether, which is just a long tape of aluminum. Unlike uh, conventional propulsion technologies, it does not require any propellant because it uses the ambient plasma and the geomagnetic field to produce a drag force that deorbit the satellite. So it uh, gradually decreases the altitude of the satellite until it reaches the upper layers of the atmosphere where it is eliminated. The EIC funded our transition project ETPAC F. Uh, where the consortium will design, manufacture, and test the flight model of our deorbit device, which we, we plan to demonstrate in orbit in three years, in 2025. 
Oh, that's very exciting, Gonzalo. And more generally speaking, but also related to your project, what are the main challenges to transition from an innovative research project with great results to an innovative company with impact? And how do you see the role of the EIC as an enabler in this transition? I think uh, there are two challenges. Uh, first, uh, we, need, we, we face a technological challenge because our team uh, has developed the Diorbit device from scratch. Second, uh, the market of technologies aimed at the sustainable use of space is not mature. This is partially because the development of, a, of a relevant regula regulation needs time. Similar to the problem of global warming, international agreements are necessary. Based on my experience, uh, the EIC is specialized in supporting radically new and disruptive ideas and technologies. In our case, the EIC gave us not only the funds, uh, which is obviously important for our team, but also the stability to develop a high gain, high risk technology like electrodynamic tethers. So in short, uh, the EIC was the first to bet on us. Thanks very much, Gonzalo. Also joining us is Lorenzo Terrabini, who is director of the project and system engineer at Senna Aerospace. Welcome to Lorenzo. Thank you very much, Ifa. Lorenzo, Center Aerospace and Universidad Carlos II de Madrid set up this labo laboratory at your facilities with the aim of integrating the avionics system into this deorbit device. When can we expect the first complete prototype of this? The good news is that uh, we already have a deorbit device prototype and currently we are extensively testing it in order to check its functionality and improve the final design. You have to think about that space mission testing uh, is a quite dividing activity since you want to be absolutely sure that your spacecraft will work as expected. Because if something fails in orbit, you cannot go there and fix it. No, certainly not. Oh, it's great news that there is already a prototype. And the second question, how do you think this innovation will be used in reality, considering that space tech companies are not currently required by law to deorbit their satellite at the end of life? Do you think that um, this prototype has the possibility to reverse this trend? We hope so. <laughs> and actually, there is a, an international standard, uh, ISO, that was push, published in July this year, that requires uh, to avoid intentional release of space debris into orbit during nominal operation. It also requires to take care of breakups uh, in Earth orbit, uh, like exploding batteries uh, on tank full of propellant. But for the first time, it also requires the disposal of the spacecraft at the end of the oper their operational lifetime. Before, the requirement was 25 years. So you can leave spacecraft there and uh, let the, the remaining uh, air at uh, low Earth orbit uh, to deorbit your satellite. So I think that the space industry is already very much aware of the space debris problem. Uh, at, the th at the start of the space age, uh, the situation uh, was very, very different. For example, if you think that from 1961 to 1963, in the frame of the Westworld project, 480 millions of needles of two centimeters were launched in space by the United States, you think that awareness of the environment was completely different. The idea when they launched these needles between 3.5 thousand and 3.8 thousand uh, kilometers uh, was uh, to generate a reflective barrier around Earth uh, to be used for communication in case of Russian attack. Now, a uh, 45 cluster of the needles that were launched at that time are still in orbit today, endangering our satellite. The space debris pose a tremendous risk to the environment uh, since the velocity in space is extremely high. Object in orbit travels at 28,000 km per hour. That means 10 times faster than a bullet. Wow. And only operational satellite can avoid them by doing active maneuver. All the other will be struck by the debris, generating more debris. With ETPAC, we will provide a solution to the orbit satellite that are not operational, so also a piece of junk. And with the current tendency, we will have much more of these satellites since uh, the current tendency is to replace, replace failing satellites with more satellites. 
So we definitely believe that a solution like ETPAC will be needed in order to mitigate the problem in the future. That's fascinating, Lorenzo, and thank you very much for sharing. And thank you also both to you and Gonzalo and Stella for the amazing work you're doing to try to help to mitigate this space debris issue. And this is all we have time for today, folks. So a big thank you again to my panelists, Stella, Lorenzo, Gonzalo, and also to all you listeners out there. Keep well, stay safe, and steer clear of falling space debris. This brings us to the end of our podcast, part of the series, The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Until next time. Bye.